Now, what's the difference? I want to tell you about two men, two men that I know. One I knew because he's gone now, lost their jobs. Two of them laid off, worked the same place. One started going out looking for a job. Other one also went out looking for a job. Something came into play for both of them that happens to us every day. It's called eyesight and mind sight. Eyesight is what you see, what you see in your life. I tell you, look into the future. What is it you want? What is it you'd like to create for you? In order to begin to choose your future, one of the things you've got to do is you've got to release your past. You've got to release your history to create a new reality for yourself. Most people live out of their memory as opposed to their imagination. Einstein said, the imagination is the preview of what's to come in your life. So most people don't use their imaginations. Most people don't dream anymore. Why? Because through the conditioning process of life, after so many rejections, see, you know what you can do. You know what you have done. And you also have seen what has been done by others in your environment and by others in your circumstances. Then you look at where you want to go and what most people do, they do that which they feel they know that can work because they've already done it or they've seen it done. And so they allow their negative history to determine the possibilities for them. And so when they run into a roadblock, even if they have something beyond their comfort zone, when they run into a roadblock, something happens to them. God just finished writing about this in the book. He did extensive study and he talked about your self-explanatory style. This is what happened to these two men. Both of them worked for the same company. They were laid off. They went out looking for jobs. They faced rejection after rejection after rejection. No, we don't have any work. No, we don't have any work. No, we don't have any work. One stopped going after around 25 turndowns and he felt personally rejected. He internalized it. He stayed home. He became angry. He became bitter. He became cynical. He started looking at television every day. They start having a beer and then another beer. And this guy just gave up. And his wife said, why don't you go and, and, you know, and just try again? And he, okay, look here, there are no jobs out there. And then he be became argumentative and toxic. This other guy kept on working at trying to find a job, kept on looking and was willing to do anything, odds and ends. He just kept on going. Other guy stopped, stayed home, started feeling sorry for himself, became angry, started telling anybody who would listen about his employer and how wrong they were and start talking about how much money he lost and that's all he knew how to do. And he became more and more depressed, more and more withdrawn, angrier and angrier and angrier. Then he started talking to other negative people just like himself, drowning himself in self-pity and sorrow and other toxic, do-nothing, hopeless people like himself. And pretty soon, one day he got up after several months, about two or three months, and drove his wife to work. Said, look, I'd like to use the car today. She said, why? She was kind of happy, thought he was going to start going out looking for a job again. He said, yes, I am. Drove his wife to work, dropped the kids off to school, came home, drove into the garage, closed the door, left the car running, and took his young 37-year-old life. His mind sight told him, your situation is hopeless. And the fact that his wife was working and supportive of him really didn't mean anything. He felt less than a man because he couldn't provide for his family. He looked at his situation and he felt like he couldn't get out. There's no hope for him. He kept on reading the newspapers and listening to the television and other negative people and he felt there was no way out. Other guy, around five or six months later, guy who kept on facing those no's and rejections and whose explanatory style told him there must be a job somewhere, someplace out here with my name on it. He kept on and he found one. Two men faced with the same thing. Both of them saw the circumstances they were in exactly the same, but they interpreted and saw it differently. Your mind side determines in many ways, in many cases, what you see as possible for you based upon what you've done and what you know has been done. And most people allow life to control them and their circumstances and people and events, just like the guy who took his life. As we begin to look at what we want, as we begin to look toward the future, here's what I'm saying and suggesting to you, that in order to begin to take charge of your life and to reshape your future, What's going to be crucial for you is to look toward the future and every time you find yourself saying that you can't do something, putting yourself down, being negative about you and the possibilities for you, you've got to literally catch yourself and you've got to affirm to yourself in the process, hey, 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 no, 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 I can make it. I can make this some way this can happen for me. You've got to remind yourself 
that you've got powers within you, talents within you that you haven't even reached for yet. That you've got to go outside of your comfort zone. A lot of things we say we don't like because we haven't even tried them. That once you give yourself an opportunity to try and to experiment with your life, to stretch, you'll find out you can do more than you can ever begin to imagine. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me share something with you. I would not tell you this if I have not experienced this myself. I used to be in an audience just like you, hearing people talk, and, and I just, uh, wait a minute, there was a part of me, there was a chatter chatter. See, 87% of our self-talk, how we explain things to ourselves is negative. That's been given to us by life. 87% of our thoughts are negative because we live in a negative environment. We think 40 to 50,000 thoughts a day, according to many psychologists. So in order to begin to create what you want, one of the things we're going to have to do is use some tools over the next six weeks as you work and begin to develop a different kind of mindset for you and your future to change that inner conversation and your thinking orientation. I guarantee you that you will change the results that you produce this year and all the years to come in your life. Now, I'm telling you this based upon my own experience. How many of you were in the audience when, when I used to come here five years ago and I used to have my tapes like this in a rubber band? How many of you remember? Raise your hand. You used to see, and Jack came up stage one time after seeing me pursuing my dream. See, whatever dream you got, that dream, that idea, that has been given to you. Nobody's going to do that for you. Nobody's going to make Les Brown tapes, but Les Brown. That's yours. Nobody's going to open up your store, write your book. Nobody's going to open up your shopping center, your school, your daycare. Nobody's going to create your home operated business. Nobody's going to heal your relationship. Nobody's going to come up with that economic renaissance idea or the idea to begin to retrain our kids and create a new kind of concept and approach to education. Everybody showed up with something that's been given to you. You came here with something and I think our goal and our challenge is, is to keep on until we find it. Find out what it is, what it is that you're supposed to do. And it's going to come to you at some point in time, but many times you've got to experiment. You've got to be willing to challenge yourself to go outside of your comfort zone and do some different things sometimes. That's where I was in terms of my job, in terms of my employment. I didn't like where I was. And so if you don't like it, you've got to be willing to do something about it rather than just saying, I don't like it. Well, what are you going to do about it? Just keep on whining. Life is not for whining and weeping. Life is for doing something. Your future is in your hands. You know what that means? You've got to work on your mind. Fortify yourself. You know what that means? You've got to upgrade, level up your skill set. You know what that means? That means you, you want to be in a community of collaborative, achievement-driven, supportive relationships that's going in your direction. And anybody that don't have the mindset that you have, let them go. Well, Les, can I change them? No. It's a full-time job changing yourself. I was trying to help my twin brother lose weight. I gained 25 pounds. I gained 25 pounds trying to help my brother lose weight. Because when you speak and talk to people, you dilute your energy. A person who's not willing to help themselves, you can't help them. Patrick Douglas said it best. He said, why help a man stand on his feet if he doesn't have enough gumption to lock his knees when you let him go? His head will hit the pavement. Whoa, come on. Think about that. If you're ready for a change, if you got a book in you and say, I'm in, my compilation book is going to be called The Hungry Ones. I want your story, The Hungry Ones. And then I'm going to do a speaking summit with The Hungry Ones. I'm going to teach you how to tell your signature story, The Hungry Ones. I'm going to teach you how to make money with your story, The Hungry Ones. I'm going to teach you how to become a national and global voice. Yeah, how I did it. And it's easier now. It's like taking cake from a baby. It's easier because of this computer. 2007, the Time Magazine said the computer was the person of the year. Why? Because you can create a global business with your phone or your computer. You can learn anything on here. And now the majority of money that's being generated in the economy is done at a computer. Going from brick and mortar to click and order. Listen to what, and remember what Maya Angelou said. She said, there's nothing as painful as an untold story buried in your soul. When you hear me speak, you know I'm talking to you. You know I'm coming for you. There's something in you that wants to be birthed. The water has broken. There's something in you that's ready to come out. You know it.